Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Good morning everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. But well, it's good morning for me anyway, seeing as it's only oh, just gone nine o'clock in the morning. So I'm up bright and early and ready to play today. Uh, and I wanted to play with my new um, hexagon spotlight laser cuts. Um, so this is what they look like when you get them. These are available on the website now. Um, I've popped all these out. These are just joined together, so they should be in one piece. Very easy just to pop out. So I've already done mine. Um, but you can get those um, in hexagon, but also available in circle and in square at the moment. So those are on the website currently. Um, they're in two millimeter thick MDF, which means that they're thin enough or they're strong enough to do, create a little bit of dimension, but thin enough not to add too much bulk onto your art journal page. So what I want to do today is I want to play with these three because I've got a kind of um, bumblebee theme that I want to play with today. But what I want to do is I want to join these three together. Um, so what I've done is I've just laid the largest and the two smallest down on the page. And I'm just going to create a little bit of an overlap as to pretty much where I want them. So if I just show you that, and then just straighten that up a tad, that's pretty much where I'm going to eventually put them. And I'm just going to draw a line on there. Just like that. So when I take them off, you'll be able to see that line where I've drawn just there and just there and the angle that I need to cut at. And because they're only um, two millimeter MDF, you can just snip them with your scissors. And then when you lay that back down again, that should follow the exact shape like that. So just snip that one too across there and then snip that one there like so. And then that will go exactly where we wanted it to go just like that. Brilliant, eh? So I'll pop those scissors to one side. I'm just going to grab some glossy accents and I'm going to swap, which I should have probably just left that craft mat as it was, just like that. I've got layers and layers and layers of different craft mats here. We've even got a, a green one underneath there. So let's go back to where we wanted to be. So that was about there. And that one was about there. So just get some glossy accents. Just make sure that it's not blocked up, which it is. So of course I need a pokey tool, which I won't be able to find straight away. There it is, I've put it away. I've been far too, far too tidy for my own good. There we go, we'll just open that back up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of glossy accents just on the edge, just a tiny, tiny bit. Don't need a huge amount. And then I'm just going to drop it and push it into place. Do the same thing at this side. Just a couple of drops is gonna be all it needs. Just drop that down. Put a little bit there, a little bit there. There we go. And 
and then I'm going to leave that for a few minutes. To set. And stop fiddling with it. The more I fiddle with it, the less likely it is to set in place. <laughs> so I'll be back when that's set. So while those hexagons are just drying, I've just trimmed down the top of a sheet of music paper. And I'm just going to drop this into my stamp press. So I want to stamp out a bumblebee shape. So I'll just anchor that down. And I'm going to use the Indigo Blue Giant Bee Stamp. So I want it... Now that would be nice if we actually had the music across the wings, so probably... I'm just going to do it towards the top. There we go. And then grab my... Uh, I did have some archival, black archival ink. Which I can't just put my finger on at the moment. This is the problem when you, uh, when you tidy up. You can't remember where you've put stuff. With some... Right, so, sorry, I should have shown you. This is the Distress Archival Black Soot. I normally like to use Stays On. That's just my preferred brand for when I'm doing dark stuff like this. Now, again, depending on the actual paper that you're stamping onto, it can look different. Oh, somebody at the door. Bear with me a second. Sorry about that. I'm on my own today. Ian and Mr. Bentley are out. <laughs> so if anybody knocks on the door like the postman, well, I've got to go and answer. Okay, where was that? Yes, so my preferred ink is the stays on, but like I've just said, I can't put my finger on it right this very second. So I'm using Timmy's Distress Archival which I do wish, actually, they would release some more. So I'm going to stamp that a couple of times to get a really good impression. Make sure it's really dark. This is the beauty of the stamp press, is that you can go back over it again if you don't get a good first one. You can always do it again and again and again until you get the depth and the colour that you really want. And I was saying about the paper, yeah, depending on the paper, I'm using old music paper here. Um, and each different, if you're using book text or old music paper or Bible paper or whatever, it will react differently um, to whichever ink. So always do a tester before you commit yourself because each ink looks different on each different type of paper because it will absorb at different rates depending on whether or not your paper is coated or fox or slightly shiny or whatever. So just see how it works first before you commit yourself. Right, that's dark enough for me, I think. Happy with that. So I'm just going to take the paper off. I'm going to pop a piece of kitchen towel just under there, just to absorb the rest of that ink, because otherwise you end up getting nasty stains all over it. But I'm going to do that later. I won't do that now. So this is what we've got. Now can you see this actually looks like there's a line in the paper. I think that was originally a fold in the paper, but that's fine, I don't mind that. I'm now going to attempt to cut this out as best I can. So I won't bore you with um, the cutting out process. I shall just get on and do it, and I'll join with you when I've done it.
but I do need to make sure it's dry first before I start cutting anything out. So let's just give it a quick blast. Okay, so my bumblebee has been cut out. Now I've deliberately left a little bit of a border all the way around, just because I wanted a little bit of a, a frame, just so you could see it pop from the page. But when I drop it down onto the actual page of the book, I'm gonna be using my Dilutions 8x8, it kind of blends, which, you know, is kind of nice. Um, but before I stick anything down, what I need to do is just to colour the bumblebee a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some fossilised amber and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of paint, oh, a little bit of paint, a little bit of ink, just by running the nib onto the ink pad. And I know people are going to be saying, oh, you're going to be watering it down, but in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that fossilised amber just onto the bee, just to give it a little bit of colour. A little bit, nice bit of watercolory colour. And then I've also got wild honey. So I'm going to introduce a little bit of a darker colour, just kind of around the edges. And while it's still wet, it will blend a little bit better. And remember, it will dry a little bit lighter, so we could add a bit more colour later on. If I'd really wanted to go a bit darker, I could add in maybe some pumpkin spice or um, spiced marmalade, I think, or pumpkin, whatever it was, whatever colour, <laughs> an orangey colour, I'm trying to say. But for the time being, I'm going to leave that just as it is. So again, I need to let that dry for a second or two, and then I'll be back. Right, so while the bumblebee's drying, I can now bring in my hexagons. So they've dried enough for me to be able to just place them down like so on the page, and then just lightly with a pencil, I can just roughly draw around, just really lightly, a little bit of a guide for positioning on the page in a little while. That's pretty much, you can just make out the line. So I'll just place that down somewhere safe and out of the way. Okay, so what I wanna do now is to start building up some layers of, of color and texture in the background. But because I've now put that down, I know where to avoid. So I've got my honeycomb stencil. So what I want to do is I'm just going to grab that and some structure paste. This is from Imagination Crafts. It's a very nice fine structure paste. By fine, I mean fine grit. It's not, um, it's not chunky. So you can get some nice detail with it. And then I'm going to just blob that down and then just scrape that way and just slightly go away from the shapes that I've drawn and then just lift that up and then we'll do the same again down here put some down and then just just scrape it And lift. And you can see that I'm actually away from that line that I've drawn. I'm hoping that it's staying in focus because sometimes it doesn't. So I need to get these cleaned off, washed otherwise because if I let that dry it'll stick and I'll ruin the stencil. So I'm going to do that and then I'll be right back. So while the rest of that structure paste is drying, I'm going to take a leaf out of Ian's book and I'm going to use some Dina Wakely 
penny, which is copper paint, and a distress foam, and I'm going to load up the foam with the paint, and I'm just going to gently spounce all the way around my shapes. And you can see that the reason I wasn't worried about the glossy accents was because the paint's covering it up. So it just spells it all the way around. I'll give it a couple of coats. And I'm not bothered about getting down the edges on the inside because the darkness where it's been laser cut and it's burnt just kind of gives it that um, shadow effect. So just let, let it be. Because it's only going on thin, it's drying pretty quick. Because using the sponge on the distress foam, the ink blending foam, also gives you a bit of texture on the paint which I kind of like. Okay, so let's get that dried off. Okay, so the structure paste, I forgot what it was called for a second then, has dried enough for us to be able to use it. So what I want to do this time is I want to grab in some yellow spritzers. So these are the ones I made using pigment powders. I've got lemon and I've got yellow ochre and I've also got orange. So those are the three main colours that I want to use on this background. I haven't gessoed so all I'm doing is just giving them a shake just to break up any sediment that's gone to the bottom. Um, I haven't gessoed I'm just going to let the page do what it wants. So, so I'm going to spritz. Just come over to the second page. I've got a little bit of a. That's better. So that's the yellow. So I'm let that sit for a second, and then I'm going to come in with the orange. Give that yellow ochre a spritz and then we'll go into the middle. I'm not going to do too much of this. And then we're going to let that sit for a second or so and do its thing. Just going to grab a piece of kitchen roll and just take up some of that from the bottom, like so. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow. Just maybe a little bit towards the top. Just a little there on that side of the page, because you see it started to run in. And then maybe just a tad in the middle there. Okay, let's start giving this a little bit of movement just so that it kind of moves itself around, that's perfect. And then we'll just start giving it a helping hand to dry. 
Okay, now that that background is dry, I mean, look at that beautiful kind of chaos of colour. And the reason I call it a chaos of colour is because you'd never be able to repeat that pattern, even if you tried. The way that the inks uh, have dried on the page is a unique pattern, and never to be repeated. And that's what I love about using these kind of um, spritzers, which are so inexpensive to make. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to add a little bit of additional texture onto the page. So where I've got those two outer hexagons, I can see where I need to kind of go. So using those distress inks again, so use that wild honey, and I'll just grab one of my ink blending foams. Okay, so we've got that. So if I work into the middle, just go around in circles, we should have some of that nice kind of honeycomb pattern just appearing in the middle and again over here. Don't mind if I get a little bit just on the outside. I don't want it to be all in the middle. So I'm kind of liking that. So let's just see if we can match up that pattern again about there. And let's just take it a little bit further outside. Yeah, just got a little bit coming out. I think we can do a bit better than that though. Yeah, just up the top there. Perhaps I was being a bit too precious about keeping it within the hexagon shape. Because I think it does look a little bit better when it comes out, particularly when we know we've got the frame that's going to go on there afterwards. And we're going in orange into orange there, aren't we? So let's also just come down here a little bit. Just add a little bit of that there. Yeah. And then of course, just to bring the left hand side in, let's just add a little bit out this side too. And then just lightly, there we go. That just kind of brings that side together. Okay, the other thing that I want to do is I want to add some text. So I can either do this by stamping or using a stencil. Now because I haven't done any stamping for a while, apart from with that bumblebee, let's do some, stencil, some stamping today. And I'm gonna use this other indigo blue stamp. This is the Collector Edition number two French script. So it's a little one. It's a little tiny one. So I'm going to just do this. Um, now then, do I need a stamp block for this? No, I don't think I do. So let's just add a little bit of stamping in, just lightly. Just a couple of pieces around the page. Yeah. Just take a little bit of that over that structure paste at the top. I'm happy with that, I think. Okay, so the next thing to do is to bring in our hexagons. And they should now fit exactly on the page where we said we wanted to put them. Just like that. So I'm going to use, I'm going to have to clamp some of the pages down because they're a bit wobbly bob just to get them a little bit flatter and I'm going to glue them down with glossy accents 
I think that was pretty much where we said we were going to put them. So just fit in about there. If I can find where I put there it is, that's where I put the glossy accents. So I'm just going to turn that over and then just start adding a little bit of the glossy accents around. And of course, I'll just switch over fingers. That should do it. If I turn that back over again, we should theoretically be able to drop that down pretty much in exactly the place that we want it. Do you know what? I think that was it. Spot on first time. Okay, so there's a little bit of glossy accents come out there. That's fine. So what I need to do is I need to put something down with a little bit of weight on it just to hold it. So I'm going to drop that down just like that and then put a couple of pieces, something heavy, just over the top just to kind of give that push for it to hold onto the page and then I'll be back in a couple of minutes. So the hexagons have now dried so what I want to do is just add a little bit of shadowing underneath um, underneath the actual hexagons themselves. So again, using that wild honey, I'm just going to use the brush. Just take a little bit of that colour and I just want to add just the smallest amount. And this is also going to help blend out where the pencil was because we didn't quite hit the mark with the pencil marks. So just here is where you can just see one of those pencil marks. So if I just blend that area the pencil marks just start to disappear and diffuse a little bit but also we're creating just a little bit of kind of a a diffused shadow underneath. And then just to kind of make it a bit more in keeping, add a bit there. There we go. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with the way that looks. So all we need to do now is to stick down the main focal point, which is that bumblebee. Ta -da -da -da. So I'll get some glue, a little bit of tacky glue, and then I'm just going to add a little bit. I'm not going to go all over it. Just going to add just some around the edges and just up and through. I'm not going to add much onto the wings. And then just go down the legs. Beard on the body. It's very delicate paper, so you don't really need a huge amount of glue. That should do us. And I'm going to flip that over. Just holding the wings, I'm going to position it exactly. Just slide it a little bit. Into there. I'm just going to have the B wings just over the top. I think that, that just fits perfectly inside that hexagon. But of course I'm not going to stop that. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Ooh. Fat throat. Mm. So I'm not going to stop there. I want to add a little bit of a quote to the page. So I've got, I think these are the Tim Holtz Big Chat. I think that's what they're called. So I've pulled out these two sheets because I want to use two words from this side, or this sheet, and two, if I can find it, there it is, from this one. So I'm going to put that inside there. I don't just want to um, leave that white, I want to just diffuse it slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of colour over the top of the antique linen. So I just need to clean off all that orange that we had there first, pick up some of that antique linen and then it might actually be a bit too subtle. I might have to go a little bit darker. Yeah, I think I am. I think the antique linen is a bit too light. Um, so, let's use that fossilised amber. I haven't got scattered straw maybe. Let me just go and find it and I'll be back. Back with the scattered straw. So let's try that one instead. So that one's still probably a bit damp. So let's just go, ah, oh, that's better. Just slightly takes that stark whiteness away without being too dark and in your face. There we go. And of course, you can just build up the colour until you're happy. With the way it looks, if you want it a little bit darker in the middle, or around the edges. Just go back in with a bit more colour. Like I've said many times before, you can always add, but you can't take it away. But in this instance, you can actually take it away, because all you have to do is just add a little bit of water and dab off the colour because it reactivates. So I think what I'm going to do is we'll take a little bit of that fossilised amber. And I'm just going to add maybe just a little bit around the edges. Almost framing. Of course, if it's a little bit too dark, just add a bit more water and it'll diffuse. But we're only talking minute amounts of water, not huge amounts of water, you don't want to flood it. <laughs> I 
There we go. I think I'm happy with that. That's where I'm going to call that a day. Yeah, very, very happy with that. So all I have to do now is just to sign it and date it. So let's just take that clamp off the bottom. Actually, let me just get rid of that bit of water there because I know I'm probably going to end up putting my elbow in it. And I'm just going to sign it down here at the bottom and put today's date, which is the 26th of September 2020. There we go. So I think that page is done. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me put that art journal page together. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.